Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Sailing Towards Osiris, which is a new worker placement game on Kickstarter right now. And I'm going to be doing a quick two-player run-through so you can see what it's all about, although before I get to that, I should caution you to turn on your Klingon subtitles, because that is where any notes about goofs I might have made are going to be listed. And I do make goofs from time to time, but hopefully this run-through will give you a pretty good idea of what the game feels like if you can decide whether you want to back it. Uh, the Kickstarter page itself, of course, you can hit the eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes. You can see the final thing because what I've got here is a prototype complete with stickers on the board because they were updating and balancing stuff. Um, but let's stop talking and let's start sailing. Here is the situation. The Pharaoh is dead and we are all competing to um, erect the most impressive monuments in his honor so that we can become the new Pharaoh. Now I'm playing a two player game like I said which means that, um, there's already some stuff set up on the board as blockages to tighten up the board. You can see the red player has already built a lot of monuments all over the place plus this caravan has been taken up plus spots on the um, on the monument building places are taken up as well. So the board's a little bit tighter with more players you wouldn't have all this stuff laid out. Instead you'd only be focused on the funeral bar where the Pharaoh is. Now the game's going to take place over four seasons. Um, season one, two, three, and four. And each season we are going to be placing workers like crazy to gather resources, grain, stone, and bricks so that we can use those resources to build the um, awesome monuments. And at the same time we will also be using cards that will give us special benefits. As part of setup everybody got one random card. I am an ox team master. Jen, in secret, is a master engineer. So those are special powers we have. And there's a whole deck of cards we could get to give you more powers. And I should say secret because everybody gets a uh, player screen, which you're supposed to keep your stuff hidden from. I'm not going to bother with that right now because I'm playing by myself. But as part of setup, I have two stone, two brick, and two grain, as does Jen. I've got my one special starting power, and I've got five boon cards. Now, everybody has the exact same boon cards, the boon of... Uh, uh, Horus, Boon of Bastet, Anubis, Isis, and Osiris. All right, so we're set up, we're ready to go, and how does it work? Well, at the beginning of each season, we have to find out what workers we have available to us. So we go to the Chicken Cup of Osiris, which it's not comes with the Chicken Cup. Of course, the game comes with a sack, but I'm using the Chicken Cup. And you can see there's a certain number of three types of laborers in here. Everybody's going to draw three and keep it secret. It stays behind your screens. So I got a master clay worker and a normal stone and a normal grain. All right, I got a little bit of everything, the three types. Jen, she draws three and again, keeps them secret. All right, so she got um, one of each type, but no masters. Now we keep drawing them until there are only three left in the cup. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So um, that means three additional workers are out here. Oh my gosh, wow. Two master laborers, master stone and a master grain and a regular grain. And the rest stay in the cup. Now, I am the first player, which gives me a little bit of an advantage because I and I alone get to look in the cup and see what's still there. Okay, there's two clay and one stone. Nobody took those. That gives me more information. And in fact, through process elimination, I know exactly what workers Jen has because I can see what's left in the cup. Benefits of being first. Get up early in the morning and you get a little bit of extra information. Jen, of course, doesn't know what I can do. I know what she can do. And now we are off to the races. And a given season is going to last until both players pass. And on your turn, there's a bunch of different actions you can do. We can use our laborers to harvest resources, visit cities, or um, join caravans. Or we, uh, on our turn, as our one, on our turn, we get to do one action. We can hire additional laborers, and we can see there are all those available. We can trade at the market. There are four opportunities to trade at the market. We can plan a monument, and this space, this space, and this space are blocked in a two-player game, but there's still plenty of other spaces that we can be planning monuments. We can build monuments that we previously planned. We can play a card. I can play my Ox Team Master, either for its special power, take three labor tokens from the labor pool. Boom, I can just play this right off the bat and get all those. Or, uh, oh, no, no, not, not the workers, but tokens, resource tokens, which I'll talk about a bit later. Or I can just trade this in and get a grain and a stone anytime I need it. So I can, and Jen, she's got her card. Or we can play a boon card, and that's an interesting thing. Once, we each have the same cards. If I play boon card number two, no other player this season will be able to play boon card number two. And you, um, and then it's gone for the rest of the game. We're going to play through four seasons. Each season, you want to play at least one of these cards because these are very, very powerful. Um, but if you want to play two and somebody else beats you to it, you won't
won't get to play two, boon card number two, until the next round. So that's something to bear in mind. And the last thing you can do is withdraw, you know, pass, which means you're out of this season. The first player to do it is the one who gets to claim any of these benefits. Um, and then once these benefits have been claimed, they are out of the game. So we're in a race to grab resources, to grab building spaces, to grab extra workers, to, um, to pass, to grab extra bonuses. Um, because it's first come, first serve, every step of the way. And I am first, so let's go. Now, what am I going to do right off the bat? Hmm, I think, well, I have a master worker, but man, I noticed there's extra master workers over there. I think before I deploy any of my own workers, I'm going to recruit another master worker. So, I mean, because there's a regular one and two masters, I could either get the master stone worker or the master grain worker. I think I will take the master grain worker. Now, to recruit any of these laborers, and everybody's going to see me do it, I have to give up any two goods I want. So I can give up two grain or a stone and a clay, whatever it might be. I will give up um, a, uh, a grain and... Uh, but I'll give up both my grain. All right, so I've given up two grain. And this came over here. This is the, what was it called? The, it was, very, it was important because remember, rice powers. Take three resources from the laborer pool. The laborer pool has started to be built. Later on, I can use this special power card to get resources out of this pool that builds up. All right, but anyway, so I'm using this. I gave up two grain to get the master grain guy. And now I'll be able to use him to hopefully get five grain. So I've got, I've increased my work uh, staff. Now it is Jen's turn. And let's see. So she could follow suit and get the other master worker, which would be pretty cool. Or she could rush right out to be the first to actually build um, something or, you know, to actually harvest resources. Um, you know, and the interesting thing is she has no master builders. And there's, like I said, there's two workers. The master builders who have, you know, the extra little uh, details on them and the regular workers. Here's the fundamental difference between them. If you're going to use one of your laborers to harvest resources, you can see there's all these places all up and down the river to harvest resources. Master laborers can go anywhere. They're, everything's available to them. Regular laborers can only go um, to the region that the funeral barge has gotten to. So they're a little bit more restricted. And since Jen got a bunch of restricted guys... I think she is going to go and grab some stuff right off the bat. She's going to use one of her regular guys and come over here. Here's some farmland. Um, now, you see, because, the, because we set up the dummy player, some, this little bit of clay pit is gone. This bit of farmland is gone. These stone are still available. Um, but Jen's going to come over here to this farmland. And since the entire, there's two spaces, since the whole thing is available, Jen will come here and she gets to activate both of them. Jen just collected five grain. And resources are limited. There is a finite amount of grain that is available this season. So, and Jen's just grabbed half of it, or almost half of it. So, and she has now claimed all of this. So if somebody wants to use a regular, like I've got this regular laborer who can go and get grain. He can't come here to get this anymore. He could come over here, because remember, the regular guys cannot move past where the barge is reached. So he could come here, but that's only going to get two grain. So there's a, it's a race, and you can see why Jen rushed out there really quick, because she didn't have a master laborer, so she could get a whole bunch of stuff. So that was her turn. Now it's my turn again. And you know what? I say, oh, if that's the way you're going to do it, I'm gonna, I have a regular stone guy. He can't get to all the stone that's further down the river, so I'm going to send him over here. And, um, you know, there, there's these two spaces. Since nobody else is here, he gets it all. He gets four stone. All right. And so I have tripled the stone I've got. And now Jen's like, no, because she had a regular stone guy. And now this side of the river, there's no place for him to go. He has no work he can do because my guy has gobbled this up. If he were a master one, he could come over here to the ones that are further down the river. But... Um, he can't go to stone. Now, there are other things you can do with your laborers, though. Remember, your laborers can harvest resources, which is what you've seen me do so far, or they can visit a city, or they can start or join a caravan. And since Jen's guy is no longer good, hmm, you know what? Um, well, actually, before Jen worries about this guy, she notes, hey, there's still this double space of clay, and Jen's got a regular guy of clay. She better grab that clay while the grabbing's good. So Jen just grabbed all that clay. And we're, get, we're getting stuff really fast. Now, I don't mind because, hey, I don't have a regular clay gatherer. I've got a master clay gatherer. So I don't mind not being able to. I can grab this one or this one over here. So I've got plenty of other options. I'm not that bothered. So that was Jen's uh, next turn. So we're getting a lot of resources. And we need all these resources because it's expensive to build these monuments. Okay, so now it is my turn again. I've got one last regular laborer. 
and he's grain. So he could come over here, but only getting me two grain, that's not particularly exciting. So instead, I'm going to use him for one of the other benefits. I'm going to have him start the caravan. Now in a two-player game, there's a, there's a caravan on the north side of the river and the south side of the river. In a two-player game, the south side caravan is all gobbled up by, you know, blockers. So there's only the north caravan. I'm going to be there, and you want to be the first to, take for, to go to a caravan for reasons I'll show you. Everything you want to get there first. That's the repeating thing of this game. Um, so I'm going to send him up to the caravan. And I mark that that is my guy, because it could have been anybody who put him there, by putting my camel. So I have just started a caravan, which gets me three clay and two grain. And you can see there's even less grain. There's only four grain left in the common supply. It's almost all gone. All right. Which is a problem for my master grain guy, actually. I don't have to worry about that. All right, so there we go. I got a whole bunch more stuff. Yay! Which would all be in secret. All right, so now it's Jen's turn. And Jen's like, no! Because remember how her stone guy um, isn't any good because he can't go past the barge? He can't get to these stone fields? Jen was planning on having her stone guy come up here and launch the caravan because the first space in the caravan gets you five resources. So I grabbed the best one. No problem, you say. Jen can go on ahead and take the second one. Hey, at least you'll get two stone and um, some uh, two stone and some grain, right? Here's the problem. If you, so I have started a caravan. Jen could come along and join my caravan. She would get um, these three resources, but so would I. We would both get two stone and one grain if Jen joins me on the caravan. And she doesn't necessarily want me to have that. So I think instead, she's not going to join me on the caravan with her, uh, with her stone guy who is of no particular value. Now remember, Jen... She, I mean, there's still this master stone worker who nobody's recruited. Jen's got so much food here, I think she's going to spend a little bit of it and grab this master stone guy so she can send him over here and get a bunch of stone from that field because there's still a bunch of stone that's left to get. So that was Jen's turn. My turn again. I have two more laborers, and they're both masters. So I've got this guy who can give me a bunch more. Although here's the problem. He could get me five grain. There's only four grain left. So if I send him over here, it would be kind of wasteful. Um, because, you know, most of the other grain has been grabbed up. So I think I want to do something about that. So I'm going to do something else. I've already gathered a whole bunch of resources. I think I'm going to first to start planning on building a monument to the Pharaoh. I'm going to take two, I only have two grain. I'm going to take all two grain that I've got. And I'm going to take, where am I going to build? What do I want to build? I am going to build, hmm. okay, I'm going to take, Two, uh, two grain, you can see how much you need in all these different spaces. Two grain, two clay, and two stone. So I've still got a lot more resources, but no more grain. And I have actually paid to start working on a sphinx. These are spaces to, to, to build a sphinx. These are for the, I forget what they're called, the towers, and, and uh, they all have names. They're all monuments. I forget what they're called. But anyway, I'm going to build a sphinx. That's the easy one. So I've paid all these resources, and all these resources that I paid go back to the common supply. And now look at that. The grain that I need, the grain has refilled. So now my guy will be at full effect coming over here. And I've started working on a pharaoh. All right. And which means nobody else can claim this space. So that was cool. And um, there you go, a sphinx. And so now it's Jen's turn again. And let's see here. So she's got her master stone builder. And there's only one master stone builder. So Jen knows she doesn't have to rush to come over here to get all this stone. So where does she want to go instead? Um, you know what? I think she's going to send her stone guy. Again, she's not going to have him join me on the caravan because she doesn't want me to benefit from her getting there late. Jen's going to come to a city. Now, when you go to a city, you can go to any of the cities. There's a bunch of them, although some of them are... Actually, even the ones where things have been built, you can go there. Um, places that monuments, you know, uh, harvest fields, resource fields where monuments have been built, you cannot send a person there. So this is blocked, so, you know, a clay person can only get two clay instead of four clay. But even if you've got a big monument in a city, somebody could go there. So, but anyway, Jen's just going to go there to that city. And when you go to the city, you draw two more city cards. Remember, we each started with a city card that gives us a special power. Jen's going to draw two and pick one. She could be the baker or the overseer. Gain one grain from the supply, then choose a laborer from the labor pool and use it immediately. So um, get a grain and then just use one of these guys. So it's like getting a little bit of extra food. Or instead, you could cancel, you could discard this to get some stuff. The overseer, remove one laborer from the map. So like, 
like this is interesting. Um, you know, Jen, um, you know, if 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 she wanted to get stone here, she could kick this guy out and then go in there again. Or she could kick um, this guy out so, so that she could build in that area. Because once the fields have been used, they're kind of these are blocking, you can't build monuments in that area. So this lets you remove a laborer from the map uh, and use it immediately. So you pull a labor off, you get a worker placement at a different map space, and you clear up a zone that you might want to clear up for various reasons. These are both pretty cool. They both give you, if you use them for the other thing, both give you a grain and a stone. I think Jen will take the overseer. Right. So she has given herself an extra power. And now here's something really cool. She has a choice. The other card, if we were playing with three or more players, she would have to give the other card and the other benefit to one of the other players out there. And at this point, of course, all the other players want this. At the very least, this is two resources, but it could also be a really cool power. Jen has the choice. She can show this to the other players if she wants, or she can keep it secret. But she can basically start a little auction now and say, okay, who wants this? Who's going to pay me for this? Uh, you know, because she has to give it to somebody, and it's worth, a, it's worth something to somebody. So um, when you go to the city, you get a power, and generally somebody will bribe you to get what you want. And if you want, you can entice them by telling them what it is. So, in a two-player game, of course, there's nobody competing, so Jen has a choice. She can either discard this, and if she discards it, she immediately gets one grain from the supply, or I can bribe her. So, it's still, it's like there's a dummy player who's already offering one grain, and now I've got to do better. If I want to get this card, I've got a bunch of stone and clay, and I could say, oh, I, you know, she discards it, she gets a grain. But I could say, I'll give you two stone, and then she might give it to me instead. And, um, you know, and she might say, oh, no, this is a really good power. She might even show me whatever. So she can just discard it, get a grain. She's got a lot of grain, though. She doesn't have a lot of stone. And so I say, that, and I say, hey, look, I see you've got some stone. I'll give you a stone. Wouldn't you rather have a stone than another grain? And she says, how about two stone? And I say, how about not? A big part of this game is bartering. In fact, the rules have an entire section devoted to bartering and how you can do it. You can barter for future favors. I mean, I could offer, you know what? Okay, I won't give you two stone, but I'll give you one stone. And I guarantee you, I'll give you the next city card. I won't discard it. You'll only have to pay me one thing instead of two things. So, you know, I, I, could, I could promise her something later. I could promise not to build in a place because she really wants to build there. You can make any kind of promise you want, or you could give resources or whatever. Um, so anyway, Jen's got this. She's going to get one grain if she discards it. And I say, I won't give you two stone, but I'll give you one stone. And I promise if I ever go to the city, I'll let you have it for one. And she says, my choice. And I say, okay, fine, your choice. She says, deal. All right. So I give her a stone and I make a promise. Promises are not binding. I could break my promise later. And so I've just gotten the baker. Okay. So I paid one stone to get that, but what else have I given up? Later on, if I ever go to the city, I've got to make good. But here's the deal. I might never go to the city. Uh, I just might choose never to do that so I don't have to make good on my promise. Ha <laughs> ha! All right, anyway. So that was Jen's turn. She went to the city, and we both got a little something for it. Now it's my turn again. I've still got two laborers. Um, let's see. Remember, I refilled the uh, area. So let's come over here and get five grain. One, two, three, four, five. Is that all of it? Nope, there's one grain left in the supply now. Stuff is uh, getting gobbled up fast. Okay, so now if Jen wanted to go work a farmland, she wouldn't be able to get any. But she's got plenty of grain. She's not too terribly worried about that. So now it is her turn. She still has this labor. She'll go on ahead out here and get some stone. So she's got the stone from me, plus some more. All right, my turn again. And let's use my last laborer. Now I can send my last laborer up here. Um, I won't get the bone. I mean, I'll get the resources, but me. No, actually, that's not true. Wait, I'm sorry, I lied. You, I mean, you cannot send two guys to the same caravan. This is waiting for Jen. If she never takes it, I don't get that bonus. But I do have this master. Let's come over here because I'm not going to go to a city. I don't want to make good on that promise I made. And he'll get me four more clay. And now clay. There's very little clay, very little grain left in the common supply. All right, Jen's turn. And what is she going to do? She's got a whole bunch of resources. She has no more workers. Now remember, as soon as somebody passes, they can claim any of these bonuses. A stone and a card, a victory point, and a clay. Four clay, five grain. Although there is no grain. But if Jen wanted to, she has no more workers. She could quit right now and be the first to pass. You know what? I think she's going to. Although if she wanted, there's still a worker here. She could pay two resources to get this worker. 
Um, but what would he do? He could come over here and get two more grain. There isn't two grain in the public supply. She could go to a city again. She doesn't want to go. So I don't think she wants another worker because she doesn't want to do the caravan and benefit me. I think Jen's just going to pass. Just passing. So she can get any of these. A clay and a victory point. Which may not sound like much, but in this game, that's, a, that's not nothing. Or I think she's going to come here and get three more stone. Jen has cornered the market on stone. All right. So that's it. Jen's out. I can keep going now to my heart's content. And when I pass, the season will be over. So what am I going to do? Well, hey, you know what? Remember I set up to build this earlier? Now I'm going to finish it. And I can build this. Now, sphinxes have to be built on empty resource spaces that are doubles. So um, can't be built here because this is taken up. These are taken up. Um, could be built here or here, though, because nobody's taken these. But could be built anywhere. Could be built over here or over here. But here's the thing. We are in a race. The first player, or actually there's a little reminder of it here on the other side of the player aid. Um, when you're building, first of all, if you build in the same area that the barge is in, you get one bonus victory point. In addition to the two points you get for building a Sphinx. So if I build this Sphinx over here, because that would be legit, it's not blocked by workers, I would get one, two, three points. Also, if you are the first player to build all four of your Sphinxes, you get an extra bonus point. So I'm, I'm off to the races. But there's all, th those are the short-term things. Um, first to build Sphinxes, first to, oh, there it is, obelisks and pylons, the bigger things. At the end of the game, I get two points for every three monuments I have adjacent to each other. So if I build here, you better believe I want to build here and here at some point in the future so that I can get bonus, uh, so I can get two bonus points for having a bunch of stuff built next to each other. Um, here's the thing. This is not a great place to build because I'm already cut off in this direction. Um, and so if I don't, if somebody builds over here, then I could never get a two-point bonus for getting three things next to each other. So instead, maybe I, sh well, now I can't build over here because this worker has claimed all of this. But I could build, where could I build? I could build over here, and that gives me two spaces to expand into when this worker is out of the way. Oh, but, but if I build over here, I'm on the wrong side because the uh, barge hasn't crossed this line yet. I want to get the extra point for building where the barge is, so I will go on ahead and build right here because either I could build here or I could build here. These are taken by this worker. These are taken by this worker. These are taken by this worker. So these are the only two places I could build. This one, I'll never have three adjacent because this thing's cut me off, so I'll build here and maybe I'll be able to get some more adjacencies later. So that's it. And so I scored two plus one for being near the barge. That is one, two, three. I'm on the board. Jen is passed. She's already out. She's saving all these resources for a lot of builds later. So it's my turn again. Hey, oh, oh, boss, oh, this is a thing that happens only in the two-player game. We have these blockers. As soon as somebody finishes their build, the blocker moves over. So this space is blocked, and now these are available. Um, you know what? I could keep building and guarantee my three of a kind right now. Let's do that. Let's go on ahead and take one and two, and three. That's everything I need. All of these go back into the general purpose supply, so it's slowly getting refilled. And um, that was a Sphinx. It's Jen's turn, but she passed. I'll build this over here. Now, unfortunately, I'm not in, so I've lost a point. If I wait until the next season when it's over here, I'll get more points, but I want to take advantage of the fact that these can't be taken from me. I built it, so I only got two points instead of three. One, two, hey! And um, this moves over. And now, Jen's passed. <gasps> oh. oh, yes, I can do it. All right, just barely. So I'm going to build again. Four clay, one stone, and two grain for this first space. I was just shy, but I had just enough stone. That was a close one. Bye. I, you know. So I spent all that because I have no more laborers. I, I, mean, you know, I could go over here and get this laborer by paying two grain, but all he does is get more grain. Uh, but I had just enough stone to build here, and then on my next turn, I'll build here, and that gets me two more points. But once again, I'm not next to the thing. But because all three of these are adjacent to each other at the end of the game, I will score two bonus points. So basically, I gave up two points by building in the same region to get two points at the end of the game. But there's something else to bear in mind as well. I get three points at the end of the game every time I've got four more monuments in the same river segment. I now have two monuments in this river segment. If in the next round I build in these two, I'll have four all in, along this section of the river. That's three points to be had. And now I only have to build one more Sphinx 
And I'll be the first to have built all my sphinxes, which will get me an extra point as well. So that was my turn. Jen's still passing. She's just sitting on this big mountain of goods. And I'm, I think I'm done. I've got two more grain. I've got no laborers. I could spend this grain to get this laborer. But um, he's a regular laborer. So, uh, and actually, all he'd be able to do would be to let me go to a city. I think I'm going to hold on to my last bit of grain. And that's it. We have finished, folks, the first season. And, um, right. So, and Jen, um, so first of all, Jen got this bonus. She takes this back, and this space is completely cut off. And the game's going to come with some special markers. I just used some excess, um, you know, resources. All right. Nobody can ever build in this space, or no, if anybody passes, they don't get. To, oh, shoot. Uh, so much stuff to do in this game. Um, right. We're not done yet because there was one more thing. Remember, Jen passed a while ago. Right? And she had her marker to say she passed. I kept going. I totally forgot. Our boon cards. I could be playing these. Jen's passed. She can no longer play a boon card. You know what? Before she passed, that was wasteful. You only get four chances throughout the whole game to play a boon card. Jen did not pass right away. She knew I still had workers and stuff. Before she passed a few rounds ago, um, let's see. I think she would have used one of the boons. Which one would it have been? Um... <clears throat> Right. No. May I leave one monument? I've totally forgotten what they are now. Uh, I'm playing reduce at the end. No. Move one of your monuments at the end. Do. All right. She doesn't have any. So actually, ah, none of these are particularly good. I mean, for what? Because she didn't show herself up. She could have, if she hadn't passed, she could have played, say, because um, remember, she was out of workers at the time. She could have played um, the Boon of Bassett. Which means I wouldn't be able to do it anymore. No other player could do two. This was before she passed, she played this. She could take anything she wanted out of the bag, and that would have been one more worker action. To say maybe finally, yeah, what the heck, she'll go and get the resources, or she would go to the city again, or what the heck, she would go and get just a couple of clay. So she could have done that, and it was worth it to get two more clay. And then it prevents me from using it. And, you know, so she did that, then she got the clay, blocking me from being able to build here. So this was the only place I could have built. And then also, and eventually she passed, and it's still my turn. I can't use the Boon of Bassett, but is there anything else I want to do? Um, oh, you know what I could have done? What would have been smart? As I was doing all my builds, because I was completely uninterrupted, before I built this last one, I could have um, moved, played the boon of Anubis. Move one of my monuments on the map to a new legal location. I would have moved this here, and now this is out of the game. Nobody else could play it this round. And then when I built this, I put it, boom, right back there, which got me another point for building next to the barge again. So those were some examples, and these boons are out. If we were playing with other players, um, you know, they would both be, no, I wanted to use one and two. In a two-player game, that's not quite as... Um, pressing an issue. But anyway, so I played a boon card. Jen's played a boon card. I think I'm done as well. So we reset. Like I, like I was saying earlier, we block this. Nobody can take that anymore. Um, nobody grabbed this food. It goes back into the supply. And um, first of all, if there were any um, incomplete monuments that either of us had, uh, not, had, had planned but not built, well, we'd lose those now. So, you never pass until you've built all those things. But yeah, I built a few things and they're, they're all passed. Let's see. Our camels go back. And all the laborers, whether they were used or not, go back into the cup to randomize for the next season. All right. Did I get them all? I think so. Yeah. Yep. And... The barge moves on. And now we're on to the second round. And now, not, you know, regular laborers can grab a, a stone. Could get, the first player to come out here could get four stone. And fortunately, there's five stone in the supply. Now, Jen, she can make the next round be nothing, just forget it. I mean, because, remember, Jen passed first. Um, so, let's see. No, does, I forget. Does the turn player just switch to the next player, or is it whoever passed first? I think it's whoever passed first becomes the first player next round. Yeah, Jen is the first player. So right out of the gate, she'll be able to grab all that stone and completely bogart all the stone, totally stifling my ability to do anything. Because Jen could just get a whole bunch of stuff here and then plan, spend it all to plan a whole bunch of stuff, but it won't be until she builds stuff that it goes back in the supply, which would completely cut me off. So that Jen could have an uninterrupted series of builds as well. Um, because you saw how I benefited from it. Jen could do that the same. But anyway, we're going to start the next round. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't get our boon cards back. We get our workers. We're each going to draw three. 
and continue. And that, folks, was just the first of four seasons of Sailing Towards Osiris. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts now, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.